Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. My name is Nathan. Alex is away on vacation, so this week I wanted to do a spotlight for another show on Delvecast.com, specifically one I make called the Orbital Earthcast. Orbital was my very first foyer into podcasting, so I had to figure out what I could make by myself with basically no budget, knowledge, experience, or media training. The result was a show about an alien with the power to travel through time and space who decided to use that power in the most productive way possible, a talk show. I made about 30 episodes before deciding I should really release them and have been producing episodes on and off for the last five years. So, what you're going to hear is an episode of Orbital that should appeal to our Delve listeners. Gapstorm, the host of Orbital, leads three of my regular characters through a game of Castles and Catalysts. It was mostly a satire about the classic starting quest every adventuring party goes through in an RPG. And yes, while it may be painfully obvious, I do all the voices with the help of my limited understanding of digital voice modification. I started realizing many of our listeners may not have heard this and thought it was worth spotlighting, as I will have the first episode of the new year releasing on Wednesday. Also, programming note, I am recording some new episodes of Delve this week while Alex is away, so expect regular episodes with special guests starting next week. Also, if you happen to be around Twitch on Saturday, March 2nd, we are planning on doing a live show on our Delve podcast channel at 9 p.m. Eastern. We're trying to get into a groove of doing the first Saturday of each month, and welcome listeners to stop by and join in the conversation, whatever that may be. All right, with that said, I will now turn things over to your host and musical guest, I guess. Uh, Gap, take it away. Welcome to the Orbital Earthcast. Roll for human interaction. Critical fail. Oh well, that just means you get to spend more time with me, Gap Storm. This episode is brought to you by The Unbearable Being of Lightness, now playing at the Spheroidal Theater Complex in Leluland. Penned centuries ago by the Orator of Highest Ambition, this play presents the inherent problems associated with being a creature composed solely of helium. The indentured press calls it a triumph of the helium spirit. Wormhole's Winding Road says it reshapes your understanding of gaseous life forms. And Transcendence Time Space proclaims it oddly relatable. Follow our protagonist, H.E. Periodico, as it struggles to live in a solid-centric world. Whether picking up bags, learning to drive, or attempting conversation, Being of Lightness presents a heartfelt and hilarious portrayal of a creature you likely walked through on your way to work. But act quickly, this production will end once the lead actor dissipates, so get your tickets now. The Unbearable Being of Lightness, it's a play about nothing, and yet it says everything. With a veiled attempt to get ratings, we are trying something new on the show today. I have recently learned of a popular form of human entertainment called role-playing. This initially conjured up old memories of a friendliness seminar where I watched my co-workers explain proper smiling procedures. They had puppets. This was not a pleasant experience. The thought that humans found enjoyment in corporate improvisational exercises disturbed me to no end. But my fears were allayed when I was informed this kind of roleplay was different. Players fight epic battles, explore fantastic worlds, and build rich stories. Better yet, the puppets are optional. So I was back on board, and ready to build an epic campaign using the greatest roleplaying system ever created, Castles and Catalysts. Built 3,000 standard Earth years ago by Griffin Drakes using actual castles, C&C used mechanics that were so complex you could obtain a master's degree in cryptology just by reading the rulebook. Of course, over time, this complexity made it difficult to attract new players, and it was all but lost to the ages. However, the system resurfaced during the Geek Uprising in the Platonic Friend Zone. The mechanics were vastly simplified, and a new rulebook was published by the Technically Literature Company. The game is fairly straightforward. Roll dice to make things happen. Basically, that is all you, as the listener, needs to know. The specific rules will only be important for me, the Castle Master, and my players. Because I wanted to have a genuine human experience for this episode, all of my players are sapiens I met through this show. 
We have our resident poetry enthusiast, Moxie Havoc, our big business expert, Bill Raffis, and the social media mayhem generator, Chad. I picked them specifically because they are the only modern humans I have had on this program. Also, they're fun, right? I am brand new to CMing, so I hope I did an adequate job. To keep things simple, I made a very straightforward starting quest for them to complete. How well that worked is up to the listener. If all their characters live through it, I consider it a win. Let's discover what happens when our party begins their epic quest on this episode of Orbital. All right, let me just check social real quick here. All right, everybody, uh, uh, welcome to the very first session of Castles and Catalysts. Sweet. Terrific. Is everyone really excited? Oh, oh yeah. So yeah, why not? I've got all my papers. Okay, we're good. Had we're nothing good. better to do, really. I mean. All right, so we should probably go over some characters. Uh, Moxie, you are playing. Yes, I am. No, Mo- Moxie, who who are you playing? Oh, right. Uh, my character is Sundancer Moondragon. All right. She is a teller of truths, mm-hmm. a bringer of harsh realities, a light in the encroaching darkness. Great. Also, she enjoys shouting into the void in jazz fusion. All right. So where did Sundancer come from? Well, she was molded from magical clay and brought to life by the shadow of her former self. So... Who was her former self? Yes. Got it. So how did she become this teller of truths? Oh, you know, when you're born of clay and shadow, you you just have to be honest with yourself. Sure. I mean, I envisioned countless years of her sitting inanimate next to a kiln, mm-hmm. thinking of all the lies these clay pots were telling her. Mm. You'll never be a real girl. You'll never go on adventures. There's no such thing as jazz fusion. Harsh. And then she awoke smashed all the lying pots, and set out to prove them wrong. Terrific. So what is Sundancer's class? Well, I call her an emo cleric. She's a healer, but she's not happy about it. And the angrier she gets at the world, the better she is at her job. It's the cruel reality she lives in. That's really interesting, Moxie. Oh, also she writes poems to combat the darkness in others' souls. Fun. All right, Bill. Uh, yes, hello, I've read him, Bill Raffis. Nice to, nice to be back yeah, on the show. Uh, Bill, I think everybody knows who you are. Can you tell us who you're playing? Right, of, of course. Uh, I am uh, playing a character called uh, William Raffis. Well, that's your... I mean, uh, uh, no, no, that'd be, that'd be silly. Right. Uh, r- rat face. Rat. Man. Face. Oh. Will. It's, it's short. Will. Will. Rat face man. Will, Will Rat face man. Okay. Uh, he is the former CEO of the Away We Go shipping company. Uh, who decided to seek adventure during a midlife crisis. He, uh, he sought out an ancient order of monks that uh, offered an upper management program. All right. And uh, once his training was complete, he emerged as a mighty wizard. I don't think monks can train you to be a wizard. These were really good monks. Uh, all right. And, uh, and after this magical self-discovery, he changed his name to a Will Ratface Man. Wait, you changed your name to Will Ratface Man? Yes. What was your character's name before that? Bill Ratfaceman. So you changed your name from Bill to Will? Yes. It was a major transformation in his life. But you kept Ratfaceman. Gotta remember where you came from, Gab. I mean, that's your heritage. All right, so so what class are you actually playing? Uh, I am calling my class Business Wizard. Uh, I can overwhelm my opponents with random clearance sales and surprise fire drills. Uh, but this time, they are literal fire drills I can shoot from my hands. Oh, that could be useful. Well, you, you know, Gav, nothing motivates an underachiever like a fire drill flying past their face. That's, that's leadership right there. Whatever you say. This is great. I, I think we're going to like this uh, role-playing thing. Good, good. And uh, finally, I'm almost scared to ask, but Chad... Yeah? Who are you playing? Uh, hey, uh, I am playing, uh, Hash Taglington the first. He has 10 billion followers on Spellstagram and a trillion lurkers on Stabchat. Of course. Hashtag HumbleBraggington. This will not end well. All right, Chad. Uh, it's Hash. I have to get in character. Fine, Hash. Where dost thou hail from? Huh? 
Where are you from, Hash? Oh, yeah. I am from the interweb islands mm -hmm. where my family rules as the chillest monarchs ever. Yeah. When I was very young, my parents realized my true potential to drive them insane. So they sent me away to train at Slash Star's School for Impossible Children. Mm. After running with scissors too many times, I was moved from the Arts and Crafts program to Introductory Fighter Training. So is that what you are, a fighter? Uh, actually, my class is Ladies' Night, because I'm real popular with the ladies. No, no. Try another. Alright, how about Decapitation Specialist? No. Intermediate Melee Enthusiast? No. Murder Hobo in Training? No. Okay. Social Jousting Warrior. Really? Fine, fine. Trust Fun Brat with a sword? Well... Wait, I have a better one. You are going to love this gap. My class is now... Ladies' Night. That was the first thing you said. Oh, right. How about this? Why don't you just tell me what you do? Oh, right. I'm the guy with shiny armor, a big shield, and a sharp sword. Wow, you're like a living tank. Ah, there it is. My class is now... Hash Tank. You know what? That's as good as we're going to get, so I'll allow it. Cool. Shall we make this official with a highing of the fives? So many regrets. Hashtag, hashtag, already trending. All right. Uh, everyone has their character sheets. Uh, so many, <gasps> right? so many There's statistics. There's a piece of paper with numbers. Uh, oh, yeah. I already took a selfie Sorry, but... with it. Uh, I expect everyone to keep track of your own statistics and inventory. Uh, copy. Uh, and now, I welcome you to the alternative medieval Earth setting 821406, known commonly as Illudir. Sounds tragic. I like it. You arrive in the town of Miris. Oh, uh, let me just pull up the hollow map to give you a visual. Uh, Gav, I, I don't mean to ruin your flow here, but uh, okay. I'm just uh, wondering, mm -hmm. uh, do do all of us know each other by this uh, point in the story? You know, that's actually a fair question. I, I, I don't know. Um, what do you think? Do all of you know each other? Well, I mean, Hash knows everybody, mm. so yes. Well, you know, Lady Moondragon doesn't really like people. Right. But I'm thinking that maybe she came to this Miris because it's dark and disturbing, and that kind of fits her personality. All right, so Sundancer would have already been in the city. Yeah, she's probably been there for a while. All right, and Bill, uh, Will, I'm yep. going to have to get used to that. Yes, Will. Yes, you do. Yeah, uh, almost, uh, almost I, slipped up there. Yeah. I, I apologize, I apologize. Well, I imagine if uh, Miris is uh, really the, the hub of activity that it appears to be on the, on the map here, mm -hmm. that uh, Mr. Ratfaceman would more than likely be uh, offering his services to uh, local businesses, helping with uh, workflow and the like. So, so I imagine he's probably been in this place for uh, a little while, maybe, uh, maybe ever since he came down from the mountains. All right, so would you have met uh, Sundancer? Yeah, I imagine that uh, maybe he knew uh, Sundancer just by a general acquaintance, probably uh, handed out some business cards at one point. I, I do think that I got a business card. Excellent. Mm. That's how networking works. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, that, whatever he said. Mm. I just came for the party. What party? There's no party going on. Yeah, I, I mean, there's got to be a festival going on, right? No, no, Hash, there's no festival. Then, then I really don't know why I'm here. All right, so what about this? Miris was having festivities, mm. but you got the date wrong. Well, uh, that doesn't really sound like a Hash thing. Uh... I, I believe it was actually scheduled for next week. Oh, well, in that case, I'm just, I'm fashionably early. Yeah. All right, well, I mean, Hash is a trendsetter. So, I guess it makes sense that he came and, and now they're gonna roll out the red carpet. Maybe that's why they have the festivities in the first place. Alright, I can roll with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure, that sounds fine. Alright, so, uh, let's just modify that beginning. Uh, Hash Present. arrives in the town of Miris, cool. where Will mm. and Sundancer yes. were already residing. Excellent. That sounds right. Alright, so I walk up and I go... Hello, magical cleric and wizard. I am the famous Hashtaglington the first. Oh, right. That's you, a you... lot of syllables. Yep. Do you follow me on Spellstagram? Uh, I, I don't really know what uh, Spellstagram is, but uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I could I could do that. Great. I'm I'm Will now. Yeah. Just for the record. Yeah, I, I okay. get that. Yep. Spellstagram is a tool of the corporate machine, and I refuse to be involved with it. Uh, yeah, like, right right on. Uh, whatever, uh, I mean, <clears throat> sorry, I'm hashed now. Right. Uh, 
Uh, all right, fair lady. I one? understand your reservations and respect your decision. All right. So now that we've all been acquainted, uh, you walk into a local tavern called the Flagon Wagon. All right. So if this is a tavern. There must be drinks here. Let's right. get some drinks, right? All right. You walk up to the bar, and the bartender says, "Can I get you ah! something?" Like what oh, just happened? Uh, that was gap, uh, I think something happened to your voice there for a second. Uh, That's the voice I I'm doing for the bartender. Oh right, role playing. Can I get you anything ah! to drink? It's just, it's just right in my ear. So oh. maybe we could just All make right. it a nope. little softer. I, I can, I can handle that. Uh, can I get you anything to drink? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Uh, can't hear you, Gap. The bartender asks you if you want anything to drink. Oh, uh, yes, uh, I would like your most popular beverage, whatever that would be, sir. So, Grog? My name's Hash. Uh, no, the most popular beverage we have is Grog. Uh, alright, uh, tell you what, I will take a Grog, and, uh, maybe, like, if you could put, like, a cherry in it, that would be nice, really colorful, that'd be great. Sure, uh, one Grog with a cherry coming right up. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Uh, bartender? Yes? Uh, is there a, a drink that might be testing well with audiences 18 to 35? Uh, surprisingly, also Grog. Uh, very well, then, uh, I, the great Will Ratfaceman, and definitely not Bill Raffus, <sighs> would like to have, uh, one of these Grogs in an average size, please. All right, a basic Grog for you. And you, miss. Uh, I excuse me? You will address me as Lady Moondragon. Uh, I apologize, milady. I'm not your lady, I'm just a lady. Oh, uh, of course, of course. Are you able to handle that, yep. barman? Did not mean any offense. <sighs> what can I get you? Do you have any drinks that embodies the darkness in mankind's souls? Yes, we have a wonderful variety of, uh, grog. Sounds evil. I love it. Please give me one. All right. Oh, but can you serve it to me in one of those skull mugs? Uh, oh, yeah, I want one of those, too. Uh, I, I go with crowd, so uh, I'm going to say uh, I'll take one of these skull mugs, too, if that's still an option. All right, so just to clarify, three grogs in skull mugs, one with a cherry on top. Yes. Right on. All right, the bartender gives you your skull mug grog, and you enjoy your beverages. Mmm, tastes like sadness. And now that everyone has gotten thoroughly inebriated... Totally trashed. Uh, the bartender comes over to you and says, Uh, you look like strapping young adventurers. Perhaps you would be interested in a little job. Oh, a little job. Well, there, uh, uh, there really aren't uh, little jobs, well, like, uh, little people, but... Technically, uh, I don't have any way to pay for this drink, so... I didn't really have anything else planned, I mean, I so... suppose I could. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, that I would be fine, uh, I guess. I will take this task. What they said. All right, very good. Uh, it, it's really a simple job. I, I would even do it myself, but I am unable to for reasons I cannot get into at the moment. Oh, a little shady there. Well, you know, Mr. Barman, I feel like we've made ourselves very vulnerable to you at this point, and the least you could do is, you know, open up a little bit about your reasoning. Uh, fine, I have a terrible fear of rats, and I have an infestation of the blasted pests in the cellar. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? This bartender is really guarded with his emotions. Definitely, definitely not upper management material. He's really throwing off Sundancer's chi. All right, all, all I need you to do is go down there and eliminate the vermin. I can pay you a fair wage for your service. All right, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's, uh, let's talk about this fair wage. I mean, uh, define that for me. Uh, it feels like uh, this is an unskilled labor job, so uh, our definitions of uh, fair wage may be sure. different. Uh, I shall pay you five currens each. All right, understood. And, uh, and what exactly is a curren? It's the standard form of currency in this world. Well, uh, I, I don't know. That, uh, that seems a little low. Maybe we can negotiate? Well, Will, yes. why don't we both roll for Wordy and see who wins? All right, that sounds fair. All right, it uh, appears that I uh, rolled an 83. Uh, uh, what does that mean? That you used the wrong die. I, I use all the dice, right? No, no, you just roll the d23 and then add your Wordy modifier. Just the one? Yes. Uh, can, can I negotiate for more dice? That's really not how it works. All right, but, but, Gab, my, my wordy rating is three. Doesn't that count for something? Sure. Why don't you roll for wordy against the CM? Excellent, excellent. All right, looks like I rolled a 21. All right, fine. You win the contest against me to roll two d23 against the bartender. Yeah, excellent. This is great. I love the interaction here. Really gets you 
thinking how you can outsmart the game. Yes, uh, CMs love that too. All right, uh, rolling my two dice. Great. And with my rating, that is... 10. Your negotiation with the bartender is not successful. Well, I feel I did better with the one die than the two. Sometimes that happens. Uh, Gep, I would like to return to using the one die. That sounds great. Phew, really uh, dodged a math bullet there. The bartender says, So are we agreed on the five currents, then? Well, uh, I suppose we don't have much of a choice. I failed the rolls. Sure, it's all good. Pays for my drink. Well then, noble adventurers, I shall show you to the cellar. And you head toward the back of the tavern, where he opens a hatch in the floor, and you descend into the cellar. Let me just change the hollow map real quick. Uh, you will notice that you can only see the spot where you are at, because this cellar is pitch black all around you. Uh, Gap, if it uh, pleases and sparkles, mm -hmm. uh, can I use my Brighton spell? Oh, uh, I yes. would call it an electrician, but I'm uh, thinking those haven't been invented yet. Uh, sure, roll for mystery. All right, I have a three in mystery. That's good. So I rolled a 17, uh, plus three for my skill, right? That's correct. So 20. That is successful. Yes, good job, dude. I would be happy for you, but I was made of clay. I, uh, I knew I could succeed in the magic business. All right, Will, yes. uh, roll a d1. Uh, all right, uh, you mean this marble? Right, uh, just roll the marble, and wherever it lands on the hollow map is where you can see. Uh, I think that was pretty good, right? Yes, you can see most of the way down the hall, and in front of you, you now see a rat. So creepy, I love it. And it says, Hail and well met, adventurers. Well, Please don't kill me. I have a wife and 50 oh. kids to feed. Wait, wait, so, so this rat talks? Well, of course, don't all rats talk? Not in my experience. Oh, you off my medication. Uh, well, this would be a new one by me, Gap. Oh, all, all right. Well, uh, I guess these are talking rats, then. And uh, this, this rat has a family? Well, that is what it claims, but it might be lying. Who knows? All right, so uh, I am having an anxiety attack over the thought of killing something that talks. Wait, I thought you said you smashed a bunch of clay pots that could speak. Sorry, I meant something furry that talks. Thank you for clarifying. The rat says, I am so furry and cute, you wouldn't hurt me, right? Uh, I hit the rat. No, don't hurt Splinter! You named the rat? Well, it makes it a lot harder to take out your aggression on a defenseless animal. Oh, that, that's a potential customer right there. You sure you want to do this, Hash? I mean, yeah. Uh, I came here to chew pretzels and kick rats. And they didn't have any pretzels. No, wait a second, you never asked about any pretzels. Fine, were there any pretzels? No. As I said, they did not have any pretzels, and that has been well established at this point. All right, Chad. <coughs> Hash. Thank roll you. for punchy. Cool. That's a 14 plus my three punchy. Is that good? Yes, that will be a successful attack. You can roll for damage. Sweet. I rolled 315. I don't think that's possible. Oh, wait. If I rearrange them, I rolled 531. No, you put the numbers together. Right, you, you put the numbers together, and they become 531. No, it's a 5, a 3, and a 1. That is 9. There's a 9 too? No. So I have 9,531? No, it's called math, Chad. Oh, we do math in this game? Yes. Should have just said that at the start. Thought the dice would have made that apparent. Uh, Alright, 5 times 3 times 1 is 15. Addition, not multiplication. Man, this game is hardcore. At any rate, that will successfully take out the rat and his family's hopes for a brighter future. Yeah. Theoretically. Stop! I cast Holy Face Palm at Chad's sword to deflect. Uh, the name is Hash Me Lady. Oh, you are so annoying. I feel your pain, Moxie. Uh, all right. Roll for smart. I rolled a 17, and my smart is four. Excellent. You deflect his swing. Oh, man. Now that spell has pushed, so it forces Whoa. him backwards into some wine cast. Serves him right. Uh, roll a d5 to see how much damage he takes. Absolutely. Hey, that's not fair. Well, technically, she could have rolled 4d5 since it is her primary statistic, but I'm calling this friendly fire, so I'm just considering environmental damage. Uh, so you are welcome. Thank you. My lucky numbers are 6, 6, 10, 13, and 19. No, M Moxie, I wanted you to roll a d5, not 5 dice. Don't you mansplain to me? Sorry, that's just how the rules go. Rules were meant to be broken. 
Maybe the man who built this imperialist game needs to change his viewpoint of the world. Well, the creator didn't technically have a gender, and it's been dead for thousands of years, so... My opinion is still valid. However, in the interest of continuity, I shall roll a d5. Thank you. One. That is a failure. I hate continuity. That's right. Hashtag LinkedIn lives to fight rats another day. <sighs> Don't give up on me now, Tagalongs. Who who are Tagalongs? Well, they're they're fans of Hashtag LinkedIn. Wow, oh, that's a that's pretty good branding right there. They're called Tagalongs. Yeah, we get it. Sorry for a stupid impulse control issues, my furry friend. Sundancer the rat glares at you and says, "Did I ask for your help?" Well. No, but... I can take care of myself, you know. Uh, all right. Uh, perhaps I can soothe the rat with one of my poems. You can try. All right. <sighs> Fur flies, but I am grounded. Teeth chatter, but I am deaf. You are the rat, but it is I who am caged. Cheese? Very nice. Roll your d23. Six. Do you have any skill in wordy? One. The rat eats your poem. Ugh, this rat was an art critic the whole time. Whoa, if someone had only tried to kill the rat when we first encountered it. <sighs> Go figure. The rat starts fuming from its ears, and it says, Your poems aren't even tasty. Uh, Gappa, I I'm Bill right now. Yes. Uh, is it possible to sit this rat down and feed it a compliment sandwich? Well, roll for wordy. Uh, all right. That is, uh, five plus my three wordy. It does not like your compliment sandwich. Darn. I can smell your hidden criticism from a mile away, magic man. Well, uh, th this rat is not invited to the company picnic, I can tell you that. Sundancer, the rat attacks you. <sighs> what is your springy rating? Um, is it this number? Yes. <sighs> my springy rating is three. Well, that's good for a starting character. Yes, but I feel my inner springiness is far lower than that. You know, let's just go with the number on the sheet for now. But wouldn't the number fluctuate based on how I, as the player, feel about the character's situation? You know, that was actually part of the original rule set. Uh, with the revised rules, though, they realized it's far too difficult to quantify the player's emotions in the game. Quitters. Why don't we just use the rules as written? Fine. Roll for Springy. My Springy roll was a 7. Does that include your rating? Yes. So that's not going to do it. Ah, <sighs> it's as if the dice knew how I felt the entire time. All right. And the rat deals you six damage. Just like an art critic. All right, so is it possible that now that we've expended all of our nonviolent options, we can go back to my very stabby option? Gladly. If I had a heart, this rat would have broken it by now. Well, I mean, it will be less paperwork than trying to terminate its employment, so I'm on board. Cool. I hereby hit the rat... Again. All right, roll for punchy. Roll for punchy, I know, I know. That's a 17. All right, and does that include your punchy rating? Yes, I know that we do math now. All right, Gap. all right. Uh, yes, yeah, that is a hit, and you can roll for damage. Like deja vu all over again. All right, sweet, that's an 11. All right, so the talking rat... Splinter, his name's Splinter. Splinter. Thank you. ...is now dead. Good, I had already disowned him. Hashtag ratastrophe. It is at this point that you hear a rustling just out of sight. Oh, and okay. emerging from the darkness, you see another rat, mm. uh, as well as around 45 to 50 smaller juvenile rats. Oh, this and they uh... seem to form a circle around the body of Splinter. No, no, and no. the other adult rat looks at all of you with, uh, with tears in her eyes oh. and says, Why did you kill my husband? Wasn't okay, me. Okay, this um, is not happening. This is not happening. You, you this is not happening. You know, we, uh, we were just hired to do, do a job. And, uh, obviously there was a, a lack of communication here. Uh, Gap, I, I'm not really sure what I can do at this point. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss. One of the smaller rats, uh, walks toward you very confidently and, uh, puts his little, uh, rat hands on his, uh, sides. And he declares, I am Rodento Montoya. You have killed my father. Prepare to die! Alright, well, I'm freaking out right now because, uh, it, mm. uh, me, I'm talking as Bill right now. Okay. Uh, I, uh, knew a Splinter Montoya in real life. In real wow. life, folks. Are well, imitating life. It's a real thing. Man, this would make a really good creepypasta, you know? So this is just, uh, really freaking me out. I gotta admit. Oh, alright. Well, what would everybody like to do at this point? 
Uh, well, uh, I got I got to tell you, Gap. Uh, I, I'm just like I'm getting into character right now. I'm will mm-hmm. I'm will again. All right. Uh, so uh, as as Will, uh, I am also freaking out sure. because uh, Will also knew a Splinter Montoya. Go figure. And so. Strange. I think I'm going to use that uh, fire drill skill that I had. Sure. Uh, not, not to not to hurt the rats at all. Okay. Uh, I just want to scare them enough that uh, maybe they'll flee from the building. All right. Uh, that sounds good. Why don't you use your mystery skill? Uh, uh, gladly, Gap. Gladly. All right. That's really good. That's a 24. Terrific. You successfully cast fire drill. Um, where exactly are you aiming this spell? Uh, it, it looks like there might be some wine casks uh, directly behind the rats. Uh, I, th- I think I'd like to aim it there. All right, roll for damage. All right, here we go. Oh, I, ho- I hope everybody saw that. Uh, that's that's 14. That's almost as good as I could do. Yeah. Yes. That's that's great. Finally, some good news. Yeah, launching fire drills like a pro, man. All right. I mean, hark, sir, um, that was a mighty good spell. You know, don't don't worry about that anymore. Uh, let's just, uh, now, uh, sorry, Will... The fire drill spell is an elemental spell, correct? Uh, yes, it, it is a fire elemental spell. All right, well, with that much damage, uh, some status effects also get applied. All right. I didn't think this would become applicable in this session, but apparently it did. In addition to storing wine down here and other spirits, there is a significant amount of barrels specifically designated for grain alcohol, oh. and they would be in the blast radius of your fire drill. That, uh, that doesn't sound good, Cap. The good news is the rats have indeed evacuated the building. Oh, my, my plan worked. Bless their furry souls. Mission accomplished. The bad news is the cellar is very quickly being engulfed in flames. Uh, Lady Moondragon would like to leave the cellar now. Uh, I'm gonna follow her. Yeah, me too. It's too hot down here for the hash. You hurry back to the cellar's stairs and run up to the tavern proper, flames licking at your heels the whole way. The bartender sees you and says, Oh, adventurers, you've returned. Lady Moondragon has already evacuated the tavern. All right. She might be constructed of clay, but she's not stupid. Mm. That's why she has a foreign smart. Uh, Hash takes a quick selfie for Spellstagram, but he doesn't stay very long. So you're following her. Yeah, I'm leaving this place. This, this is not going to end well, I know. I, uh, I walk up to the bartender and I say, uh, Hail and well met, sir. Uh, we have uh, officially gotten rid of that rat problem, uh, a little matter of our fee. You're, you're still going to try to get the money out of this guy? Well, I figure if he's not going to pay us now, uh, there's, there's no chance of getting paid later. All, I mean, all right, so the, the bartender goes, Ah, uh, yes, I believe we agreed on five card. What, why is there smoke coming from my cellar? Oh, uh, that, that, that was just, uh, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's sometimes cellar smoke, you know? That that happens. I've seen I, it before. I've never heard of such things. Uh, well, you, you know, sometimes things don't go according to plan, and uh, sometimes a small fire erupts from it. Wait. I'm not saying that that happened in this case. I'm oh. just saying that, uh, you know, sometimes it does. As you're saying that, Will, uh, flames do start to take shape coming uh, up through the cellar door. Well... The bartender starts yelling, Oh, fire! Fire! Everyone out! Everyone uh, out! Uh, uh, yeah, j- this is me, Bill, again. Right. Uh, so, I'm... We're not getting paid for this, are we? Uh, no. All right. Well, it was it was worth a shot, right? So what are you going to do now? All right. Well, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. Uh, I'm going to just, uh, I'll evacuate the tavern as well. All right. Uh, so the three of you are now outside the tavern as you watch the entire building erupt in flames. I just wanted everyone to know that while this is happening, Sundancer has started writing a poem. I believe it goes, fire, fire everywhere, but not a sale to sell. I don't really know the rest of it, though. Hash is just taking pictures for his blog. Uh, Gap, if the bartender is still around, I think I'd like to try renegotiating this deal. He's long gone. Darn. Yep. So close. No, you really weren't. Sick burn. The flames cast a lovely backlight on the now darkened streets. And in front of this conflagration, you see a small silhouetted figure. And it is Rodento Montoya. And he looks you square in the eyes, as square as a small rat could. And he says, if you think you can cover this up with a fire, you're wrong. I will still hunt you down, adventurers, and make you pay for my father's death. This is the angriest little rat I've ever seen. uh, this, This is bad PR right here. This is definitely not how you do networking. So, Gab, I'm I'm just trying to, like, future plan here, but is it possible that this rat could come back a lot stronger in the future to to seek vengeance on us? Like, is that something I should be legit concerned about right now? That would be a legitimate concern, yes. 
Um, uh, excuse me, my lady and wizard guy. Accurate. Perhaps we should talk over in the corner for a second. Team meeting, guess. Team meeting, yeah. All right, so real talk. Um, perhaps this is a situation that we should handle in the moment. What are you talking about over there? Uh, it doesn't really concern you, little guy. Don't worry about it. Uh. So I'm wondering if maybe we should just, like, uh, take this little guy out. Not Splinter Jr. Really? This again? After everything we've gone through? Uh, also, I believe his name was Rodento. Look, I'm just thinking that he's much younger and more impressionable than Splinter Sr. Well... Perhaps I can show him how to properly express himself through poetry. You mean, like, the poem that his father ate? On the other hand, spare no one. Well, well now, hold on, everybody. I want to remind you, I'm, I'm Will again, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that uh, most of the upper management of the Away We Go Shipping Company were indeed rats. Oh. Makes so sense. there is a bright future that this uh, this little guy could uh, be looking forward to. <sighs> perhaps, uh, perhaps I should uh, ask him if he needs a job. While the three of you were over there talking, Rodento Montoya got bored and left. Okay, well, I can definitely see that ending badly in the future. Yes, that is likely. All right. Well, uh, congratulations, I guess. Yeah. Yes. On completing your first mission. All right. Deep breath, Sundancer. You did it. Oh, I have these uh, teamwork pins for everybody. Oh. Good job. Sharp and tacky. I love it. Yeah. What did everyone think of the game? Well, Gab, I I'm just, I'm kind of confused as to how you win. All right. Mm. Well, you don't really win a role-playing game. You, you just play the role-playing game uh, and develop a storyline. By doing so, but like all I do is win. So well, well, you know, in a role-playing game, it's not so much that you win as you build a story for your character as you go on a journey. Oh well, I mean that's a little conceptual for me, but you know, I, I I dug it. Oh, okay, it was, it was neat. Good, uh, Moxie. Oh uh, well, Gab, I I really just had one important question. Uh, sure, sure. So the game is called Castles and Catalysts. Yes. So were we the catalysts the whole time? Y yes, yes, you were. Good, very good. That That is exactly the reason why it's called Castles and Catalysts. All right, I figured as much, but uh, where were the castles? There's, well, I mean, there's a lot of castles around the land of Illudir. It's just that you didn't encounter any in this particular session. Oh, I see. Well, I mean, I signed up for both castles and catalysts. So I uh, suppose you could say I only half enjoyed it. Oh. I would have fully enjoyed it if there were indeed castles. Uh, all right, I will remember that in the future. I would hope so. Uh, Bill. <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm Bill again. I, I know, I just... So uh, I, I, like the, I like the team building aspect. Mm -hmm. I, I think that this is a really, really good kind of exercise for, uh, for people to, to kind of learn about each other and, and also how to work together to, to solve problems. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that was a little undercut by the fact that we... Uh, we burned down the tavern yeah. that we were trying to uh, to clear rats. So uh, I, th I think that maybe this is something that we have to work on in the future. But uh, in general, I, I really enjoyed being able to to cast spells. Yeah, that's always fun. And uh, trying to outwit the castle master was fun too. I liked that a lot. Yeah, that was uh, terrific. I appreciate yeah. so, it. So I think that those are the strengths there, uh, Gap. That's great. Um, that's great. I, 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 I'm glad that you enjoyed it, Bill. Excellent, excellent. I mean, at least somebody liked my compliment sandwich. <laughs> uh, sure. So, so is this the kind of thing that you might want to play again? Well, I mean, well, I mean I'm not winning the thing. Usually, like, I, mean, I don't know much, but I could. Uh, I mean, like it's that. possible. I think it's probably worth exploring. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, sure. Oh, okay. Uh, well, in that case, uh, maybe we will come back and, and do this again, and you will be able to uh, perhaps uh, storm a castle. Perhaps take on something larger than a rat. Like yeah. a chinchilla? You mean like a bigger than bread box? Well, yep. Like a rat that spends a lot of time at the gym? Wait, uh, is it a bread box? You know what? I'll work on it. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody, and transmission.